Hi everybody, this is Paul Harris with Global Recruiters of Blackhawk here in sunny California. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. As you may know, I run an executive search firm that specializes exclusively in the telecom sector with a specific niche of wireless infrastructure. And last week I spent my entire week at PCIA Wireless Infrastructure Show in Orlando, Florida. My Super Bowl, as I call it. Very, very exciting. It was a great, great meeting. I probably haven't calmed down. I didn't even make it onto the showroom floor, by the way, because I had kind of meetings backed up, you know, stem to stern from the, the entire time, but uh, did make it to all the keynote speeches and some of the breakout sessions, etc. And today, I'm going to try to give you a real quick download of, kind of some of the highlights that I took as I was right in the front row along with the media guys. I'm the only idiot in the front row taking notes with the media guys. But anyways, this is, like I said, it's my Super Bowl, so it was very, very exciting. Also, we're going to post some of the um, kind of more meaty videos as well on our, on our LinkedIn group. So... Um, it was also held uh, at the same, so there's about 2,000 people there. At the same time, it was being held at the same place with the tower exchange meeting, which is basically the tower owners from the emerging market. So it was, once again, it was just a crazy, crazy venue and a very, very fun, fun time. Um, the, the biggest themes, number one, I would say, would be the um, data explosion or the data tsunami, as some people are, are calling it, right? It's just no signs of it, show, of it slowing down. People with their laptops and their smartphones and their uh, tablets just, you know, downloading videos and watching YouTube videos, etc. No sign of that sh slowing down and we need to a lot of investment in the system is going to need to continue. Speaking of that, it's an estimated that the, the big four, right, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, are going to be investing... 35 billion with a B, 35 billion dollars per year for the quote foreseeable future. Um, so some people say to me, well, Paul, that doesn't make sense because if you look and turn on your TV, it says that uh, you know AT&T and Verizon are pretty much done with their LTE 4G uh, 4G rollout. So the answer is kind of yes and no. So yes, they're Kind of, kind of done. In other words, they 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 can advertise truthfully that you know was it Verizon's 300 million pops and AT and T is 280 and Sprint's going to be 250 and T Mobile's going to be 200 soon. But whatever. But the point is, they described it in the meeting. So once again, this is not my words. This isn't the speaker's words. That that is kind of a uh, a mile wide, but only an inch deep. So there's going to be a lot of you know fill in or quote densification that's going to be done to the tune of like I said, 35 billion dollars per year invested in, in wireless infrastructure over the next uh, over the foreseeable future. Great news for all of us. Um, next next thing was a lot of talk about spectrum. Right, we're not you know the world isn't inventing any more spectrum, but there's going to be some more spectrum coming from the FCC auctions and then also kind of a transition or a switch from the broadcast industry over to the wireless industry. Once again, more spectrum for us. All good news. Uh, the next one, there was a, um, a panel that went on. It was kind of uh, being moderated by a guy named Phil Goldstein, who is runs a Fierce um, Wireless, Fierce Magazine. So you guys might subscribe to that. Great stuff. Anyways, he put on a session about 5G, and I guess the basically question is, you know, what is it, when is it coming, etc. So the answer to when it is coming, pretty much everyone's a consensus, probably 2020. What is it? What's the difference between how much of it is, is um, you know, technology and how much of it is, quote, hype or marketing, etc.? The answer would be probably a little bit of both. So the bottom line is it's not going to, 5G is not going to be like from 2G to 3G and 3G to 4G where you take the, you know, the 3G equipment out and put the 4G equipment in or etc. Basically, the 4G LTE equipment that is here today and is going to be continually uh, put in over the next couple of years, etc., it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay there. Um, they're not going to remove it and then put in a far, you know 5G equipment, etc. So basically, 5G is just going to be layered on top of the 4G system, and it's going to be more, as they call it, use case based. So that's what's going on with, with 5G. It was a, it was a great uh, it was a great breakout. Um, now, in terms of um, so that was a keynote. In terms of breakouts, I'm just going to highlight one. There was a bunch of them. I'm going to highlight one that was just the most incredibly interesting to me uh, because, well, you'll see in a second. It was called the Wireless Investors Conference. So basically, this is a bunch of guys who plunk down, or companies that plunk down their money in the wireless infrastructure world and saying, I'm letting it ride, right? In other words, I'm going to make a ton of money if things go well or I'm going to lose it all because things didn't go well. Well, you know what's going on. Things are going well. Um, it had a bunch of... Uh, 
guys from the tower, so the you know, American Tower, Crown Castle, SBA, those guys were on the panel of, along with guys that are investing money. So I, I want to make sure that I say this respectfully, but when I'm telling my friends and my brother and my dad, etc., about the meeting, I, I wanted to say, you know, I felt like I need to peel these guys off the ceiling because they were so excited about what's going on and they're not predicting, predicting, you know, boom and bust, boom and bust for the next foreseeable future. It's going to be just continuing great ride like it's been for, for quite a while. So what are the reasons why that's happening? Number one. Uh, the cost of capital remains low, right, in this, in this environment. Interest rates are low. Um, Wall Street remains incredibly high on these, uh, on these tower companies as well, as evidenced by the fact that, you know, American Tower, Crown Castle, SBA, their stock price has gone up more than 50% in the past three years. Phenomenal, phenomenal place to put your money. Another thing that they talked about is the, um, the fact that why else Wall Street lo loves them is because they're not in any way, shape, or form highly leveraged. For example, an, a, a, uh, an average REIT, right, a real estate investment trust, maybe will have uh, leverage to the tune of maybe 35%. Whereas these guys, um, the, the, the big three tower companies, they're leveraged to the tune of three to 5% leverage. I mean, that's nothing. Now, uh, you might have read that I think it was American Tower went a little bit over 5% as they bought Global Tower Partners for $4.6 billion or whatever it was. Um, but I think, we're, we, A, we'd agree that was a good move. B, I think we'd all agree that, you know, stretching a little bit above 5% when an average read is, is 35%, not a big deal. So anyways, that's another reason why Wall Street is high on these guys. Um, they talked a lot about the risk-adjusted returns for United States versus, um, you know, other markets and emerging markets, etc. So uh, the consensus was, it wasn't totally unanimously, but the general consensus was United States is still the best place risk-adjusted returns-wise to, uh, to, to put your money, um, even though that some of these emerging markets and whatnot, maybe 5, 10, 15 years behind where the U.S. is, in terms of building out their system. So once again, there's going to be a ton of money made and a lot of investment and a lot of jobs created, et cetera, in these different markets. But still, USA is probably still in the first first place, you know, maybe 9 to 10% returns for, let's say, Africa or, um, you know, LATAM, Latin America, et cetera, probably like 15%, you know, mid-teens. And then for the emerging markets like, you know, Ganda or Uganda or something like that, they're requiring 20% just because of the um, you know, inherent risk in doing business in the emerging market. So very, very incredibly, incredibly cool stuff. I was thrilled just to hear it. Once again, more good news for us. Um, what else was talked about real quickly in, in kind of themes of the, of the business? So uh, the Internet of Things, machine to machine, uh, the connected car, right? You turn on your TV and they're advertising. Um, they show the console of the car and, and advertise how it's techno, uh, technologically um, connected, etc. Et and then the biggest question for that industry is, what do we do with the fact that everybody upgrades their phones every, you know, whatever it is, 12 to 18 months, but everybody buys a new car, average of every 11 years. So how do we make sure that somebody buys a car and can be able to, to upgrade that as technology upgrades? That's the big thing that everybody needs to figure out how to do. Well, so they talk about uh, big data, SDN, NFV, cloud, and then of course a ton of time on small cells and DAS as it relates to just kind of you know filling in and building out the system and uh, you know as it con you know, contributes to the overall you know het net the heterogeneous network. So, anyways, um, that was that was it. There was a, I was going to list all the speakers, but that'll be on our uh, on our LinkedIn group. One thing that I did want to mention was this: one of the speakers was uh, Bill Smith, the guy that runs at t Network Operations, right? A guy with 100,000 employees and $20 billion p and I think the guy probably knows what he's doing, right? So before he came out to give his speech, he basically said, hey, and these are my words, of course, not his, but he, it was, the theme was, hey, you guys, listen, before I start my speech, uh, everyone's asking me, what does our $49 billion investment in um, DirecTV mean to us building out our system? And he basically said, well, you know, it, we don't plan on slowing down our, our build at all. On the other hand, I'm talking to people that saying they're hearing different things that there may be a tad of a slowdown or, you know, I don't know what it is, but I don't want to sound like a gossipy schoolgirl here, but I am just trying to tell, you know, what, what he said and then kind of what I'm hearing and, you know, time will tell uh, where that ends up. So anyways, you guys, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal, great, great meeting. I loved it. I'm just oh, so excited. Anyways, you guys, that's it. I'm signing off. Have a great day and thanks for listening. Bye-bye.